Today, we are going to learn how to use the new Outlook. We will be covering 15 settings, jazzy new features, as well as some integrations. So, hi, my name's Amy. Welcome to my channel. Let's start out. To start off, Microsoft has made some default settings that you might not be used to. So we are going to dive into four of these features that you can customize the experience to your needs. The first feature that we are going to take a look at is the focused inbox, which is turned on by default. Now I wanted to explain the focused inbox feature before showing you how to turn it off as I do see this being a beneficial tool for those of you wanting to achieve inbox zero. So the focused inbox pre-sorts your emails and places higher priority emails into the focused inbox, filtering out the lower priority emails and placing those in other. So for example, this Microsoft security email was automatically filtered out and placed into my other folder this morning, allowing me to focus on these other priority emails. We can also to customize it to our needs. So for example, this double your productivity email if I want to clean out my focused inbox, then I could easily drag and drop it to the other. We have the exact same ability going the other way. Or if you always want emails from this email address to go to your other folder, then we can head on down to move. And then at the bottom here, we have move to other inbox, which is what we just looked at or always move to the other inbox. And here it's saying, do you want to move all of your messages from this email to other? And if we click OK, then any new email received from that person will automatically go to the other. I do see some benefits, but if you would like to turn this off, then we can head on up to the view tab, go to view settings, and we are already under mail and layout with the focus inbox at the top. You can just simply turn off this feature and click save. Now, before we move on from here, I wanted to show you a new feature in the new Outlook that will really help you locate some of those settings, which is this search bar here. So for example, we can just start to search for the focused inbox and it will take us to that page where we can change those settings. The second setting is this conversation thread, which places all of your emails within the same thread into one accordion folder. Now, I used to have this turned off, but I find it particularly helpful, especially if you come back from holiday or a weekend and have hundreds of emails to catch up on. It really consolidates your inbox. But if you would like to turn this feature off, then we can head on up to the view tab, go to messages, conversations, and show each message separately. The third setting is that when we go to draft a new email, that it doesn't pop out in a new window and it stays within this pane. You can navigate between some of your emails at the bottom here, but it does make it difficult to reference other emails when you are trying to draft an email. So if you would like to turn off this feature, then we can head on up to the view tab, go to view settings. This time under compose and reply, we will go to pop out settings and tick we want emails to pop out to a new window. Now, when we go to draft a new email, it will pop out in a new pane and we can easily reference our other emails while drafting this email. Before we move on to some jazzy new features, let's first take a look at some basic settings to make the new Outlook look a little bit more like home. So if we head on up to the view tab, then we can go to layout. And the first one here is the ribbon. So some people might prefer the classic ribbon and you may want to hide your folders or show your folders or even change where the reading pane is or even just hide the reading pane altogether. Some people might be used to having that to do on your right hand side. And this actually has some really good new features that we're going to dive into in just a moment or even update the density. So. This can just make your email pane more compact or a little bit roomy. Now that we have taken a look at some settings to help you get more comfortable within the app as well as achieve inbox zero, let's now dive into seven new features to help you manage your emails, your tasks, as well as your calendar 
that you can get more done. The first feature that we are going to take a look at is how we can pin our emails. So if we hover over an email, then we will see that flag icon that we are all familiar with. But a new feature is this pin. So if we select that pin, then we will see that email move to the top of our inbox, helping us keep certain emails at top of mind. The second feature that we will dive into is how we can snooze our emails. So if we want to, for example, hide this email from our inbox until a certain time, then we can select the email and head up to the ribbon. And under this tags, we can see the snooze option. We have some default options here, or you can even choose a date and time. I'll go ahead and snooze this until tomorrow. And if your boss follows up with you to respond to that email and you need to access it before it pops up in your inbox, then you can head over to the snoozed folder on the left hand side and access your email that way. The third feature that we will take a look at is an improvement to categories. So let's right click on an email and then we can head on down to categorize and categories are a great way to color code your inbox. So from here, let's select manage categories. From here, we can edit all of these predefined categories, but let's go ahead and create a new category. If you are enjoying this video, then please consider giving it a thumbs up. We can select a color from the bottom and then a new feature with the categories is this star icon. So let's click the favorites and click save. And from here, we are going to see a new folder appear under favorites. So let's take a look at that feature. Now we will right click this email, categorize, and we can define it to that thumbs up category. Putting all of your emails in your inbox within that category into this favorites folder. So that is a super handy little tool. Back in the inbox, if we delete these items, then we can go to the thumbs up folder and those will also delete there. This only shows the categorized emails for this category that are currently in your inbox. And a final tip here before we move on is how we can search for our categories in the search bar at the top. So we can just start to search for that thumbs up category. We'll see it appear here, allowing us to easily filter for those emails. Fourth feature is how you can easily attach files into emails. So we can press the forward slash and simply just start to type the file name and you will see a handful of files appear. The fifth feature in the calendar view is how we can easily access Teams meeting event information. So here we can select this meeting created in Teams, expand it, and now we're going to have all of those meeting details, including Microsoft Loop collaborative notes, easily accessible. Moving on to the final feature, we saw earlier how we can pin my day to the taskbar. We are now also able to access this from the top navigation menu. This section has some great new features that I'm excited to show you, including a calendar tab, as well as a to-do tab, providing you with easy access for your day. Let's first take a look at the calendar. This calendar feature is super handy if we want to, for example, create an event from this email. What we can do is simply select the email and drag it over to this add as an event. From here, this new pane will pop up and automatically add attendees, which includes anybody that was in that email chain as well as providing some suggested times based on everyone's availability. And another new feature of the new Outlook is this in-person event. So if we select that, then these suggested timeframes will also update based on office availability. And then at the bottom here, that email threat is automatically added. So this whole process really streamlines the event creation process. You are interested in learning more about defining your availability within the calendar that I've included another video linked in the description of this video. Now let's dive into this to do feature from the drop down menu. We can view our tasks, your my day tasks, plan tasks, 
flagged emails. Or for those of you that use lists within Microsoft to do, you can access those lists from the drop down here, making for a nice and easy integration. And earlier, we saw how we could drag an email, create a calendar event. We can now do similar when creating tasks. And another great benefit of tasks is if we head over to the calendar, just make sure that you are either in the day, work week, or week view. And then we can drag and drop our tasks onto the calendar and select these little icons to adjust the time frame. This will now block your calendar and allow you to get more done because you intentionally scheduled time to complete a task. And I have one little tip to share with you before we move on to some new features. Once you've created a task from an email, we can view that task within the new planner in Microsoft Teams, select the ellipses, and then go to move task. Here, we can define a plan that we would like to move that task to. Then we can go to that task and we will see that that new task has been added to that plan. If you would like to learn more about the new planner in Microsoft Teams, then I've included a link to another video in the description here. Now that we have taken a look at some jazzy new features, let's dive into the final section where we will cover four integrations, including some new ones. The first integration that we are going to take a look at is OneDrive. And you may have noticed this OneDrive icon on the left hand side. If we select that, then we have easy access to all of our files that are stored within OneDrive. And as a little tip, if you want to right click this icon, then you can open OneDrive in a new window, allowing you to easily access these files without leaving your Outlook dashboard. The second feature is for Copilot Pro users, and you can now easily access Copilot from the top right navigation menu, helping you understand, locate documents, or summarize emails in one easy navigation menu. The third integration is not new, but is how you can share this email to Microsoft Teams. From this email window, we will select the apps icon and then simply select share to Teams or search for this app within the top menu. From here, we can define where we would like this email to go within Microsoft Teams. And hey, if you've made it this far in the video, then I hope that you're enjoying it. And please consider giving it a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. Then we will go ahead and share this to Teams. And here within Microsoft Teams, we can see that email as well as our custom message has been posted. And the final integration that we are going to take a look at is once again in this apps icon, how we can send emails to OneNote. This will pop up a navigation menu on the right hand side where you can easily access recent sections or expand your notebooks and define which section you would like to import this email to. Here we are in Outlook and we can now see that that email has easily been sent to this section within the operations notebook. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I do hope that I've helped you discover your inner nerd today. And if you've made it this far, then please consider giving this video a thumbs up as it really helps me get traction in the algorithm. And why not hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified on all of my recent uploads. All right. Thank you so much for nerding out. We will see you in the next video.